Today I'm going to talk about one of my very favorite games, Monopoly. In today's video, I'm not only going to teach you how to win at Monopoly, but I'm also going to teach you about what Monopoly teaches us in order to win at real estate. My name is Shiloh Lundahl, and you are watching the improved channel focused on real estate investing. I love Monopoly so much that I had a customized board created for me and everybody else in our company. So here it is right here. TMF Properties is one of our companies. And so we placed around the board a bunch of our properties that we own. So when we play Monopoly, it's really personal. In fact, right here with free parking, we have a little space called Costa Rica. That's where you go just to chill. You don't have to worry about paying anybody. You just enjoy Costa Rica. Now, I used to play this game as a kid all the time. In fact, I would ask my aunts and my uncles all the time to come and play with me. Now, this is when I was like six years old. And my aunt, who was just a few years older than me, told me that she would only play with me if I would watch the movie Jaws with her while we played. Now, imagine seeing that as a six-year-old coming right at you, wanting to bite your face off. I still, I still have, have nightmares, nightmares today, today about, about that, movie. that movie. Before I tell you about how to win at Monopoly, we should first look back at the history of Monopoly. But before we do that, I'd love it if you would click on the subscribe button, click on the notification bell, so you can see all of the videos that I'm creating about winning at real estate. So now let's talk about the history of Monopoly. Monopoly was invented by a woman in the early 1900s named Elizabeth McGee. Elizabeth hated capitalism. And so she wanted to create a board game that taught people about the evils of capitalism. Now, when she created the game, the game was actually called the landlord's game. But what happened was when people started playing this game and they found out how wonderful and enjoyable it was to actually own properties and get rent from them, they loved it. And so they took those ideas and it spread all across the nation. Then a capitalist named Charles Darrow came into the picture. He was one of many people that were playing the game at the time. And a lot of people would play the game and then start adding on to it and things like that. And so eventually he created all of the pieces around the board. So he took his ideas and sold it to Parker Brothers. So Parker Brothers eventually paid Maggie McGee $500 for her patent. But most of the royalties went to Charles Darrow, teaching us once again that capitalism reigns supreme when it comes to growth and innovation. So here we have the game board, and many of you are already familiar with the game, so I'm not going to go into the, the nuts and bolts of how it actually works, but I'm going to teach you how to win at this game. The first thing to know is that not all properties are created equal. In fact, there are certain properties that you land on more than other properties. That's because the chance deck and the community chess deck have cards in them that actually advance you to certain places on the board. Also, you have the go to jail space. And if you roll doubles three times in a row, you actually go straight to jail. So the space that is landed on more than any other space in the game is the jail space. In fact, according to some stats, you have about a 6% chance of ending your turn in jail. And so that's very important when it comes to understanding which properties people land on the most. The other thing to keep in mind is the dice. There are certain numbers that tend to come up more frequently than other numbers. In fact, the number seven comes up on the dice more than any other number. In fact, when you roll the dice, you have a one in six chance of actually rolling a seven. So you have nearly a 17% chance of rolling a seven every time you roll the dice. So this is the important part because when it comes to winning at the game of Monopoly, it's very much like real estate because it's all about location, location, location. 
Because you have the highest chance of landing in jail, and also because you have a high chance of getting one of those advanced to go cards, the spaces that are located six, seven, and eight spaces away from jail and go tend to be spaces that people land on very frequently. So which properties are those properties? Well, if we take a look at the board, we have St. James Place, we have Community Chest, and we have Tennessee Avenue. And over here by the Go Space, we have Oriental Avenue, Chance, and Vermont Avenue. So if we were to take the statistics, you have a 14% chance of landing on Oriental or Vermont if you were on Go. You also have a 14% chance of landing on St. James Place in Tennessee if you were in jail. And when you include that other property in the property group, you actually have a 39% chance of landing on one of the light blues or landing on one of the orange properties, depending on if you started from go or jail. Now let's take a look at the other thing that's really important to keep in mind, which is the return on investment. All right, so here we have the return on investments per property. So over here, I have listed all of the properties from lowest down to highest properties. And I've created this metrics that shows you the return on investment for each property with each improvement. So let's take a look at the properties and let's see which properties have the highest return on investment when there have been no improvements made to the property. All right, so with no improvements, here we go, ranging from the highest return on investment to the lowest. And as you see here, we have Boardwalk and Park Place are going to be the highest return on investments if you do not improve the property at all. Here you have Boardwalk being 12.5%, you have Park Place being 10%, on downward to the very last one, which is Mediterranean at 3.3%. Okay, so now let's take a look at, well, what if you have one house? How good is the return on investment if you have one house? And which properties are the best? So here we go. With one house, we still have Boardwalk and Park Place at the very top, but now we have some of the yellow properties that have kind of moved their way up and some of the green ones have kind of started to move their way down. And here you see some of the orange properties are actually jumping some of the red and green. So now let's take a look and see what does it look like when you have two houses on each property. All right, so with two houses, again, you have Boardwalk and Park Place are still towards the top. You have one of the green, then you have, you know, the yellow, then a couple of green, you have one red, Illinois Avenue, and then you have the orange. So it's similar to what it looked like when you only had one house. So now let's take a look at putting that third house on the properties. Now, a lot of professional Monopoly players will tell you, you want to get at least three houses on the property set that you have on each of those properties. And the reason being is the greatest increase, the greatest jump in income comes when you have three houses rather than one or two on each property in your property set. Once we put that third house on there, all of a sudden you see orange really jumps pretty high in the rankings. Okay. So you have boardwalk still at the top. Then you have the next one, which becomes New York Avenue. Now, a lot of you guys really like those orange properties. And based on what I just shared with you before, the orange properties are in a great location. And then you have some of the yellow, and then it drops down to, now we have some of the light blue properties starting to work their way up in the ranking as well. And then we have some of the pink properties, and it looks like the red properties are starting to drop below along with the green properties as well. And the dark purple properties are at the bottom and spoiler alert, they tend to stay at the bottom throughout this whole exercise. So let's go ahead and jump to four houses and see what happens. All right. So with four houses, wow, we just had some big shifts. Now the light blue properties 
jumped their way up to almost the top. The only property that looks to do better than the light blue is Boardwalk. But you have the entire property set of light blue higher than any other property set. And then right below them, you have the orange, and then it starts going with pink, and you actually have one purple property that kind of jumped up there. And then you have the yellow, and then the, the red and the green tend to be towards the bottom. So now let's take a look and see what happens when you have hotels on your properties. Well, with hotels, the light blue actually jumped up with the greatest return on investment. And we can go and we can take a look at that right over here where it says hotel rent. You have 600, 550, 550. And when it comes to percentage wise, that's 162% return on investment. And then you have the other light blue properties, 157, 157. And then it goes to Baltic. So that one, so the more expensive of the dark purple properties is actually pretty high. And then you have the orange properties and boardwalk kind of fell amongst the orange properties. But the, the truth is when you're playing Monopoly, you can't improve just one property at a time. So you actually have to take the entire property set and find out, well, which property set is the best property set to invest in. So now let's take a look and look at it in, in terms of which property set is best. All right, so now that we've grouped the property sets to see which one is the best, here we have the light blue properties on average have the greatest return on investment, followed by the orange, and then you have Boardwalk and Park Place, and then you have the pink, then you have the yellow, the dark purple, then you have the red, and at the very bottom, you have the green properties. So when I play the game, I tend not to buy and keep the green properties because they tend to be at the lowest end of the property sets. So what does this all mean? How do we take this information and use it to our advantage? So here are three lessons that I learned about real estate investing by playing Monopoly. Number one, location, location, location. Location is important in real estate. You don't want to buy properties in areas that are declining, where either the population is declining or the neighborhoods are declining and getting worse and, and things like that. So you want to invest in areas that are nice. And so if you take a look at the Monopoly board, I like to divide the Monopoly board into four different classes, A, B, C, and D. Your A-class neighborhoods are going to be your dark blue and green properties. So Boardwalk and Park Place would be considered A, the green properties would be considered A-, minus, and then I say that the yellow properties would be a B+, plus. the red properties are going to be B, the orange properties are considered B minus, and then the pink properties are C plus, and then the light blue properties are C, and then the dark purple properties, those are D properties. So what does D stand for? D stands for dangerous, stands for drugs, it stands for dilapidated houses, and it stands for damaged properties. So you don't wanna buy a property in a neighborhood where all of the houses look really damaged, where there's a lot of dilapidated houses, where there's drug use, or where you would feel dangerous walking around in those properties. And that's why in the Monopoly game, just like in real life, I don't go after the cheap, cheap properties in those dangerous areas. Let somebody else take care of those. I don't go after those. I don't find that the return is very good because of the quality of tenant that you get there, also, because of all of the repairs that those properties tend to need. The real money is in those B minus, C plus, and C areas. That's where we own the majority of our properties. So one thing I've learned from playing Monopoly is location, location, location. Location really does matter. Take the properties in the A class neighborhoods, for example. Those properties tend to be higher price points they tend to take more money to repair and put in all of those nice fixes and everything like that. Yet you can't usually rent them out 
for nearly enough to cover all of the costs plus still cash flow on those properties. Really the best cash flowing properties tend to be in those B, B minus, C, C plus areas. Those are the ones where your cash flow is going to be your best return on investment. So that's number two. Buy properties in B, B minus, C plus, and C neighborhoods. And the third lesson that I learned about real estate investing by playing Monopoly is you take the cash flow from your less expensive properties and you turn that cash flow into acquiring or improving upon your more expensive properties. So just like I took the cash flow from those light blue properties and I was able to put houses on those orange properties, that's what we do in real estate all the time. And I created a video explaining how to do a 1031 exchange. That's the beauty of real estate. You can sell a property and then rather than taking the gain, you can go ahead and roll the gain into your next property and you can defer the taxes to much farther down the road in the future, possibly deferring them forever. So I just want to thank you guys for watching this video. I hope that you guys enjoy playing Monopoly as much as I do and crush your family next holiday season while you play Monopoly with them. Also, if you like this video, please click the subscribe button, like the video, it's super helpful for me, and it helps me get these videos out to more people. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic time playing Monopoly and have a great day.